Welcome into another week of Caps Chat. I'm Cody Lefkowitz, the voice of your Capitals, and I'm here with two Caps alum, Alex Brotsman and Ludwig, Sen- Ludwig Stenland. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Um, and you guys are both back in your college towns, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Alex, did you get a chance to come home? You're, you're a somewhat local kid, you're a Wisconsin kid. Yeah, I went home for a couple of weeks and then just kind of came back up here. It's it's pretty easy not having to go back and forth. So, Have you gotten a chance? Has there been any hockey-related things that you can do? Obviously, everything is sort of shut down. Yeah, our rink opened up right away in July. So we've been skating this whole month and things are starting to get back to normal. But that's really it. And- Center, what about you? I mean, you you mentioned just before we hopped on that you just got back to the state. So, you know, how crazy has your summer been since the shutdown occurred? Um, I mean, it hasn't been too crazy. Uh, Sweden really never shut down, so all the gyms were open. Um, normally, we don't have ice in uh, in Sweden for the summer, um, but I've been on the ice a couple of times, um, which was good. But going to the gym and stuff is way easier for us. But getting back was a little trouble on the way but we managed to get through um the last two weeks here well so did you have to when everything shut down did you have to go right over because i know that immediately in the u.s there were some travel bans put in place with sweden put on what that uh well we could get back to europe um but i left as soon as i i could because i didn't want to get stuck here um during the summer so I kind of left as soon as I could. I think I left after school closed and went online. I think I left like two days after, um, which is nice to get home. You know, especially for me, I don't see family too often, you know, even my cousins and stuff. So it was nice to be home for a little extra, um, even though we kind of ended on the not great terms. Uh, and then what about for this coming fall? Have they told either of you you know, are you guys going to be in class? Are you going to be online? What does the hockey season look like? Have you guys heard anything? In class is for sure going to be interesting. Like, we'll get emails and there's 50 people in the class, but only half of you are able to attend face-to-face. It's like some people have to stay home and watch it on Zoom or something, and then half get to go, I guess. So. Yeah, I think, we, I think we have the same too, but some of the classes are smaller for us, so they can be in class and some will be, like, hybrid, like, Alex said, so it'll be definitely different. I would have been one of the kids that signed up for the online, sit, and, sit at home in pajamas and watch. <laughs> <laughs> test yeah. days are going to be the weirdest, though. I mean, I don't, maybe they do like two different testing times where it's half in the, you know, half at 10 a.m., half at noon or whatever it is. I don't know. That'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's get into it a little bit. Let's start with Alec. Um, Take us through sort of your journey of hockey, you know, where you started, the youth aspect, uh, into juniors at the Capitals, and now into college, and sort of where we can expect to see you in the future. Yeah, so I grew up in Wisconsin, in Hudson, Wisconsin, uh, right on the border of Wisconsin and Minnesota. So I played Hudson youth hockey up until high school, and then I went to a private school in Minnesota called St. Thomas Academy, and then ended up getting drafted by Madison, and was there for three years so I had the same bill of family I lived in Mount Hora that was a really great time and then I'm up in Houghton Michigan right now in the UP playing for Michigan Tech and I'll be in my third year coming up. Um, from a small town called Trelefto up in northern Sweden uh, a lot of good players come from there it's a small it's like a hockey town so you know growing up playing hockey was was really big for younger players so I started playing there until I was 19 in the same organization up to U20 and then I decided I wanted to you know try to go the college path Um, and I ended up going to Odessa where I met you Um, played there for half a year and then got drafted by Madison played there for one year and then went to school or going to school in Niagara University um, up by Buffalo Uh, really good school and I'm going into my third year as well and so it's two very, I guess, different paths in a sense where, Alec, for you, you played you played high school. You know, some guys, they go out early, they come to play juniors, they go to, to an academy, which I guess you did. And then Stenland, for you, you just played essentially juniors the whole way. And you were 
added a level. I mean, the, the super elite is essentially the USHL in Sweden. And so for you guys, seeing the competition that you played, how do you feel that that prepared you for the USHL? Or do you feel that there were still a couple things that you might have been missing by the time you, you came to the Capitals? Um, for me, it's, it's, it was different because of the ring size, um, as well as the fans. That was, that was very different, you know, going to places where you have six, 7,000 people. And, you know, back home, we played in front of 150, 200. Like, it wasn't big in that way. And then, you know, as I said, the ring the ring size, like, Olympic sheets are way bigger. You get more space. That kind of took a while to adjust in Odessa, but I thought it kind of fit my how I play. So, you know, it gets better and better. Um, and, Alec, I haven't, I haven't gotten to watch much of you in, in years, obviously, mm-hmm. Ludwig being in Odessa with you for half a season. I know – what kind of shot you have and how hard that can be. But I mean, Alec, for you, you have set some capitals records for a couple of years. You held the most goals in the season with 25. Uh, You're tied for the most goals in capitals history with 39. You're tied with Sam McCormick who had it uh, before you got here. I mean, so obviously there's some sort of a shot there. How do you, how'd you go out and perfect that thing? I don't know. That was just kind of something I always had. And then getting to play with Stenland, it was kind of a, it was a good combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you look at that 2017-18 season, that was your guys' last one here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, two two of the top on the team, obviously. Alec, you put up 50 points. Ludwig, you put up 41. 25 goals for Alec, 17 for Ludwig, 25 assists, 24. I mean, those are, if you go through sort of the record books in a single season, those are all top 10 in each of those categories. Um, you know, what? why was the chemistry so good between you two? I don't know. Sometimes it's just like you, you play good together. I don't know. We talk like we talk the same way too, like how we wanted to play and kind of just our styles fit together as well. And then I, I think we had Ryan O'Reilly for a bit on our wing as well. Um, so we had a, we had a good chemistry and, you know, it was a tough year. We started pretty, pretty, pretty bad. And then we got good and then got a dip again. So, you know, just sticking together, um, huge. It, it can definitely be a roller coaster of a season at all times. <laughs> um, and that season, Alec, you were a captain. You played two years at Northern Michigan, or, or excuse me, at Michigan Tech already. And now in your third season, your third season, not even as a senior, you're already a captain again. You know, why, why do you feel that they chose you for that here in Madison and at Tech? And, and how do you feel that you develop sort of those off-ice skills? I don't know. I think just kind of growing up, I'm kind of a quiet person. But, I mean, just being in situations where I'm comfortable kind of taking that leadership role or it's something I feel like I strive in. So, I mean, it ended up being that way in Madison. And then coming into a situation here that's worked out really well, I think it's kind of the same exact way. So. Something I'm really looking forward to. This will be fun. Ludwig, why do you feel that he was picked captain that year? And, and what qualities did you see in him? <laughs> um, I, I agree with him. Like, he's more the quiet guy, but he's also, like, people have respect for him. And he kind of told people, you know, what to do if they're not doing it right, too, as well. Um, and you get that competitive side from him, too, that, you know, he wanted to win. And I think everyone saw that as well. Um, and then Alec, again for you. So you, you played three years here. Your first couple of years, you know, you had 12 points, then 16 points, and then your final year, you made a giant jump about three times. You went 50 points in a season. It was a Cavs record for a little while. Uh, what do you feel added to your development that you were able to do that? I think it's kind of the same thing. I kind of got comfortable and kind of I, I had a pretty big learning curve I'd say over the years and then kind of the third year everything just clicked and worked out really well we had a good team like good group of guys and it was just a really good situation for me to strive and I feel and ended up being pretty successful so and for a lot of guys it seems they take your path where the first year or two they're gonna and even uh, we were talking about Reed beforehand because you guys played with him Reed Pavich you know, the first couple of years he was figuring it out. This past year he bloomed in this upcoming year. I mean, he might be one of the best players in the league just having essentially four years of experience under him. But for Ludwig, you, uh, your transition to college, you didn't miss a step. I mean, you were 40 points in Odessa, 41 points in Madison, and 42 points in Niagara. That one happened in 41 games. 
you know, why, why is that transition so much easier than it is for some people? Um, I don't know. I was kind of an older, well, you know, I was 21, so I kind of grew into it. Um, and you know, it's, it's, I played for, for as many years as, as bots, but, um, you know, I kind of fit in with a team. I fit in with the coaches. Uh, I fit in with our playing style, you know, everything kind of worked out for me and it's, you know, one season, you can have a really good season. The next can be not so good. So, you know, you never know. And luckily that season was blooming for me and for our team as well. And for people that don't really know what kind of a year Stenland had that year, he was named to the Atlantic hockey, all rookie team, all tournament team, first all-star team, rookie of the year and the third all conference team. I mean, those are pretty good honors. And then second, uh, you were the runner up in the, uh, I believe the freshman of the year competition, the rookie of the year throughout all of collegiate hockey. So, um, and congratulations on that. Obviously a shortened season for both of you. Didn't really get to show your full stripes. A uh, lot, a lot of hockey was left to play there at the end and, and a couple of runs. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on again. Had you guys fill out those questionnaires so we can take a look at those and, and sort of compare between the two. Um, now you guys didn't room together. You guys are just line mates. So it's yeah. always fun to see sort of how personalities off the ice match the personalities on the ice. And we'll kick it off with the movie category. Uh, some new ones on each side. So for Alec, um, The Martian, nobody's tossed that up there. I think, is that yeah. the, the Matt Damon one that just came out? Yeah. Is that who it was? Yeah. Yep. Uh, taken. I feel like people quote Taken all the time and nobody ever has it as one of their top movies. Happy no more and kicking and screaming. I mean, why why do you feel that those are your five? Uh honestly when I was just filling it out, it was kind of whatever came to my mind. I wouldn't really say I have like a favorite movie, but just kind of ones like if I found I'd watch it again and again. So I'd say those five would be it. And on Stenland's side, Iron Man, I mean the the movie that kicked it off, the whole Marvel universe that is such a big thing now. Iron Man kicked it all off. Uh, Law abiding citizen we've seen. And then the next three we haven't seen. The dictator, I think that's the Sasha Barry Cohen, right? Yeah. Uh, put a little rated R next to that, not for kids. Uh, <laughs> and then, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's so many different King Arthur ones out there. I mean, it's nobody's put anything along the lines of King Arthur, even The Rock. I mean, yeah. it's classic movies all across the board oh yeah what yeah. is what is it yeah when you're looking at those five what is it that sort of stood out to you uh i think i'm i'm a big marvel fan but you know i can just say marvel but uh Iron man was probably the best one and then uh dictator hilarious uh and then law abiding citizen it was me and my uh one of my buddies from home that watched it like once a month um really good movie and then actually the rock was my dad's favorite movie um uh, when it came out so we watched it a couple times at home so it kind of just grew into me okay and then king arthur though that's again a little bit of a different time that's not even if you look at the rest it's sort of more current like it could be set nowadays i mean king arthur is middle medieval times and yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> yeah you know I, it was when i got like obsessed with game of thrones like i watched king arthur i think before that and then i watched it on my on a flight i think i was going home for Christmas and it was just unbelievable. Uh, after looking at each other's lists or having a little bit more time to think about it, have you guys, do you think that you missed anything on your list? Or are you pretty, pretty confident with them? I'm pretty confident. I don't know, kind of looking at Stenner's TV shows, The Blacklist and Suits would probably be on mine too. Yeah, I, you, you brought it up, TV shows, Blacklist and Suits. I mean, two fantastic shows we've had we had nobody early on in Caps Chat talk about suits, and now we've had it the last couple of weeks. And it seems like some of the the older guys, the alumni, are the ones that have it on there more than the new guys. Um, so you had you had some shows that I don't think I've ever even heard of, uh, La Casa de Papel and Sunderland Till I Die. Yeah, La Casa de Papel. I think it's called Money Heist here. I'm pretty sure. Okay. It's a Spanish show where they like rob places. It's like it's a sick show. And then I think Sun Money Heist just came out on Netflix, so I think that's where people have had it. Yeah, and then Sunderland, uh, it's like a documentary about uh, Sunderland, the uh, football club in Europe. 
or England or soccer as you guys call it. <laughs> Just throwing Americans under the bus there. Um, <laughs> uh, for La Casa de Papel, do you watch it in Spanish then? Are you fluent in Spanish? Yeah, I watch it in Spanish, and then you just have subtitles. Okay. I, w- I was going to say, you know, are you fluent in Swedish, English, and Spanish then? Is there anything else in there? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I wish, though. They talk so fast, though. It's crazy. It's tough. I can always understand. I can never, I feel like I can never speak it back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then Alec on your side, Ozark, tons of people love that. Again, came out a couple months ago, the newest season. People have been watching it nonstop. Uh, Outer Banks, Prison Break, you know, fantastic seasons, The Office and Peaky Blinders. Um, and I always like it. For The Office, how many times do you feel you've watched the show start to finish? I don't know. I fall asleep to it like every other night, so probably a lot. <laughs> probably like 10 when you add them all together. <laughs> And that seems to be more so what people do now is instead of watching it completely like they will with, you know, Blacklist or Suits or La Casa de Papel, they end up doing it as just, I'm going to watch it. And if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. It's sort of a mindless show in a sense. Um, Senator, no office for you though. Did you never, have you never gotten into it or just no, not up there? They tried to make a Swedish one and it was horrendous. <laughs> It's just like no, I'm not. I'm not doing this again. So I like a lot. Everyone watches it here. So like I'm like I watch it every once in a while, but I just never got stuck. But Outer Banks is unbelievable. Peaky Blinders is good too. I I like that the Swedish version of The Office has turned you off to the American version of, like, of The Office because I I think that's what happened as well with uh, I mean the UK was obviously the original and it was so bad that I feel a lot of people didn't give it a chance at first here. Yeah. On to video games, and I guess I had you guys fill it out, but to preface, are you guys big video game players at all? I am, yeah. Yeah. I, every once in a while, I, I, I play when I play with someone. I wouldn't sit and play by myself. Yeah, I think that's the point that I've hit as well, uh, and it seems like a lot of people have is they use it more for communication, especially in a time where we can't be around other people. I mean, you guys can't be around each other, but you can hop on, you know, an Xbox or a PS4 or whatever it is and, and talk with each other and play. And, and it's a whole nother aspect. Um, and so with that, actually, let's go into it then. Both of you, Call of Duty Warzone, probably the hottest game out right now. And it's one of those you can play with your friends, you can talk. Um, I've gotten into it a little bit myself recently as well. It's an exciting game. It's fun. It's intense. <laughs> Uh, Fortnite on both of your lists, and then we peel off a little bit. Um, obviously, NHL just being hockey players, you guys have to have it. Uh, but then FIFA, which again doesn't surprise me, they're on on Ludwig's side, right? I mean, being from Europe, he was talking, he was trashing Americans a little while ago, talking about football versus versus soccer, so not surprising at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I I actually forgot about. MW2, I would probably put that online too. Best game, I think best game ever made. Um, but yeah, like Madden, never played. I've never really, like I've been more interested in football now, but like never like, growing up and stuff, so I never really played it. So who, because you're coming from another country now, have you picked an NFL team that you follow? Or even, I mean, I guess any sport in the States, have you picked the team that you follow? Not really. Like I, when I was in Odessa, I was you know Dallas, um, and then I got everything with Cowboys. <laughs> and then now it's the Bills. So, but I really like I I like Cow- Cowboys probably the most because it was the first team I started watching. Yeah, and Cowboys and Packers are are very similar fan bases, very similar in how they run themselves. And then, yeah, being out where where you are on now in Niagara, Buffalo, it's I'm sure completely different. Oh yeah. Alec, for you, are you actually on that topic? Are you a Vikings fan then or a Packers fan being so close? Okay. Had to see. Well, because Hudson's, what, 30 minutes, an hour from Minnesota? From like 30 seconds. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a Packers fan. Man, that's, that's Wisconsin born and bred. You don't leave yeah. the state. <laughs> uh, and then NHL. But see, okay, now in NHL, though, 
you have the wild is your favorite. Is that because they're just the closest? Yeah, I just go up to going to wild games all the time. So it's just kind of playing hockey right there. That's my favorite team. So Okay, and then Ludwig, for you, you put sort of two teams. Again, it's it's very weird coming from another country where you're, obviously you have your hometown team that you're going to follow, but here you don't have a hometown team. So you put down uh, you put down Dallas and, and Nashville, I believe. Yeah, it's just two fun teams to watch. And then, um, you know, a few other guys I grew up with played in the NHL. Um, there's a guy from our town who plays for Nashville. And then Klingberg played for our town for a bit. Um, but also, like, just starting off in Texas, I felt like Dallas was just, it was just there. Uh, but growing up, it was actually Detroit because they had so many Swedish guys. Now they're not that not that good. So I don't really have a team. I just <laughs> – they were also just a powerhouse back in the day, too. Yeah. Falling off that wagon a bit. <laughs> yeah. And then on to music. We'll finish off the questionnaires here. Um, Alec, for you, very country-based. All five of them country-based, obviously. Uh, Ludwig, for you, a couple there at the end. Luke Combs, you know, he can cross the genre if he wants. But aside from that, it's, it's that, you know, pop. I don't know if I count that as EDM uh, sort of aspect. You know, why... Why have you fallen into that? Um, I don't know. I just listen, I listen to like that type of music. I really don't listen to it. I can listen to anything pretty much. Like I have some old school rock. Like I listen to Nickelback. People make fun of me. I think it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and then just like we've, well, had, we've had so many people put Nickelback on the show whenever we talk about music. So I think that it's I think it's just become like a group think thing where people actually again people actually like Nickelback. They're just like, oh, they don't like it, so I'm not gonna like it. But secretly, I'm gonna love it. Now, now it's coming out. Everybody loves them. Yeah, but then just growing up, like in Sweden, like our, you know, we had a beachy, um, but he goes from Norway, so you know, it's close and marshmallow and that type of music is just normal. Uh, you know, you turn on the radio, that's like what you hear. Are, are there any Swedish songs that you would put on this list if we knew what they were? Um, probably Avicii or um, Zara Larson. Abba is really good. You guys ever heard of Dancing? <laughs> Unbelievable. So the whole movie, Mamma Mia, it's it's Abba. <laughs> uh, and there's actually a restaurant in Stockholm where they have the musical, like they do the musical, and you sit and eat and stuff. Huh. It's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> um, Alec, for you, you have again all country on your list. I guess when you're getting ready for games now, when you're warming up, is this the type of music you're still listening to? No, I'm not really in charge of the music. So whatever's on, I'll listen to. But if I'm in the car and I throw something on, it's it's country. So it's just kind of where it comes. Not the ox guy? You're not the guy to go and grab it and, and throw your music on? No, that's not me. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> what about you, Ludwig? <laughs> uh, no, I usually let the other guys play. I'm also like Botsy said, like just go in and do my stuff. Um, and you get into a routine too as well. Like if you're winning, the same guy is going to play the music. So uh, kind of different for what you have as a team and who you play with. But we, uh, we pretty much had the same guy play the music the last two years. Uh, who is it? Who, who's playing the music in that Niagara locker room? Uh, I think it was Brandt for a while and then – I think a guy named Soke as well. Um, so they switched off a little bit. But if we were winning, it was the same guy. What about a tech? Who's who's running the uh, the music up at the tech locker room? On game days, it's usually our equipment managers. They'll take it over. They kind of really? know what they like, so they'll just sit up there and run it. Yeah. That's the first time that somebody's told me an equipment manager does it. Usually, it's it's a player, it's a vet. Every so often you get a rookie that gets kicked off after a song or two, but never heard a staff member getting control of it. Yeah, well, these, they're both students, so they're kind of, they're around, they know, so. Uh, what about when you guys were here? Obviously, Zenlin, for you, it was one year. Uh, Brosman, for you, you had three years. Who who was running the Ox here? Do you guys remember it all? <laughs> was it Brenny? Ockham? I don't know. Did we lose boss? Oh, maybe. Looks like he may have frozen. 
Yeah. You remember who? No, sorry, I just cut out for me, but was it Brenny Walks? It might have been. I don't remember. My internet just cut out, I think, but <laughs> I don't know who played the music. Either. I think somebody I don't remember who I talked to. I think somebody else at the Walker may have done it as well. I don't even remember who else. I don't think we've really gotten many people from sort of the years that you guys are here, but yeah, they didn't really they didn't really have much to talk on it either. So um let's move on. A couple more questions here at the end. Um and I guess one quick one here for Senlin that I meant to bring up earlier. So after after your rookie season in college, you got the chance to go to the Islanders development camp. You know, what what sort of things did you learn there that you wish that you knew when you were a couple of years ago when you were younger and that you feel um, like youth players would get the best effort out of now? Um, I think probably most of it was face-offs. So we had like split practices a couple of times and there's a lot of the centers that had face-offs and stuff and they kind of explained how they trained for it, how they, how you should look at other people, um, how they take their face off. So, that was huge and it wasn't like it was games and stuff but it was more like a like fun thing to do and it was also like pretty competitive obviously but it was a lot of skills and you know trying to see what they how they train and stuff so it was it was really useful um all right next up if you guys were to look in the nhl and find your one player comparison who's the guy that you feel that you you can emulate the best Ron Kogudas. <laughs> um this is always a tough question i don't really even know yeah <laughs> i feel like this is something that that hockey players get asked all the time and yet every time it changes it's never the same all right can i say his and he say mine his yeah go for it who do you think oh i think either kopitar or tarasenko <laughs> <laughs> why is that just good shot big body Plays that type of game that's you know hard to play against. I'd say the same for Stenland, though, not thinking of it. So, Kopitar, Marcinko. You guys said that you play a similar style, which is why it worked well. But I don't yeah. know. It's hard, um, especially like I don't even know. Being put on the spot, it's hard to think of people. <laughs> Think about it a little bit. We'll come back to it later. See if you guys have anything else. <laughs> um, in the USHL, you guys played in essentially every single arena. What was the best arena to play in? And what do you feel was the hardest arena to play in? I can go the hardest one right away. Des Moines. It's the smallest rink I've ever played in. I got kicked off the the face off and I was standing like by the, by the like the hash marks on the outside my ass was touching the boards <laughs> it was loud in there and they're a physical team it was it was hard it was probably the hardest one I think the rink is tough yeah mm. Tri-City maybe it's a tough one too Lincoln is tough too yeah um, what about like the the best or the coolest I would say like probably, the coolest at atmosphere, yeah. I'd probably say Sioux Falls or Green Bay. Yeah, those are mine too. Because Green Bay had the teddy bear toss. Uh, if you get it, if you get it on a good theme night, it always makes it that much better. Like we did, um, Green Bay does their dash for cash. We were up there this past year, and it was probably one of the best atmospheres that I've been in, and you know the years that I've been doing this as well, and. It always makes it that much better. Um, but, I mean, they they can sell out that place, and that thing holds a ton of people. And same thing, Sioux Falls, I think it holds – I think that they average, like, six, seven, eight thousand 8,000 people a night. I mean, that place, I'm sure – we haven't been there yet, or at least I haven't, but I'm sure that thing gets loud as well. Yeah. Um, I, I think off when they don't sell enough, like the top one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they block off the entire top, so everybody just sits down low. Which is which is smart too, and I think when they have the wiener dog night, they like pack it because one of our teammates played there last year, right, or two years ago. He played there. 
good in medicine. They've expanded that thing too. Like they, uh, they're like the Sioux Falls wiener dogs on that night now and they make specialty jerseys. And I think from what I remember, they sent one to like uh, Scott Van Pelt and he wore it on a show, I think, SVP. So yeah, they've, they've done a pretty good job. They've been around a while. <laughs> Um, and then I guess same question now for college, you know, what, what's the best arena you've played in best atmosphere and what's the toughest arena that you think you've played in? Uh, toughest for me, I'd say was North Dakota. Uh, when we played there, it was, it was crazy. And then uh, for the best, I'd say, I don't really know. When we played in Bowling Green in the playoffs, it was probably one of the best atmospheres I've um toughest um western michigan was tough um yeah um i don't know best one best atmosphere was actually our um semi-final well my first year my freshman year uh we played rit which is only an hour and 20 away and we played downtown buffalo um, and like half the fans were our fans and half was orange for RIT and it was crazy. It was better than, than what was it, the AIC championship game? Yeah, way better because they didn't like they're far away. I think they're like six, six, seven hours away. Okay. Um, let's go back. We've had a little bit of time to think about it. You guys are talking uh, Kopitar and Teres, uh, Tarasenko, I think you said. We're back to it now. Has it changed at all? Have you guys thought about it anymore? <laughs> I thought about ranting it a little bit. Yeah. For yourself. Well, I'll take it for myself. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's I don't know. It's always a tricky question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um and then the Caps have main camp, they have futures camp coming up this week, main camp coming up next week. Um, I guess final thing here is, you know, if you guys were to give a, a piece of advice to, to the players coming in, trying to make the team and get noticed, and even just youth kids that are coming in, you know, what, what would be the best piece of advice that you would give them uh, in how to crack the Capitals roster? I'd say just kind of stay true to yourself. Like you – know yourself the best and you know how you play your best so don't be trying to overextend yourself just go out there and, and kind of do your thing and everything will just fall into place so oh sorry uh can you take that again? yeah um with main camp coming up next week futures camp this week the best piece of advice that you would give to any of the players coming in or even the youth kids that are trying to make it into the USHL? Um, well, like Botsy said, just be yourself, play hockey. Like don't think about it. it's main camp or trying to make the team just play your best and enjoy it. Uh, it's like one of the opportunities you can maybe get once twice a year or twice in your life that you have a, a place you can really go, and go off and just be yourself. Guys, thanks for coming on. Uh, always fun to catch up with alumni. Um, Ludwig, I know you just got in two days ago, but we may have to send you some paintings and stuff for the wall, those white walls. I mean, look at look at Broses. He's got some he's got some pictures up, some celebrations. Or he, you know, you got a boring little house back there, so we may have to send you some stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thanks for coming on. Always a good time talking with you. Thank you. Yep.